Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and we are going to office hours our little butts off today. Uh, this is the magical time of the, the whatever, where I answer five of your very important user submitted questions about um, SQL Server performance tuning or whatever. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, if you would like to ask me questions that I answer here, you can go to that link and submit them. If no one submits questions, we don't do these anymore. Uh, I can't make questions up. As much as I wish that I could just make up questions, I can't. I'm not that good. I'm, apparently, I'm not that creative. Uh, if you want to support this channel, you can do that. There's a link down there. Uh, that link is also down there. Very important stuff. Uh, you can also like, comment, subscribe. You know, the usual YouTube rigmarole. Uh, if you need help with consulting beyond what just a simple uh, question on these office hours episodes can assist with. Uh, I'm available for help with all sorts of things like health checks, performance analysis, hands-on server query and index tuning, uh, fixing your SQL server performance emergencies, and of course training your developers so that you don't have performance emergencies anymore. All very, very worthwhile things to spend money on, and as always, my rates are reasonable. Oh, we got a little skippy there. Uh, if you want to get some training from me, <clears throat> perhaps you are not fully ready to have me consult on your server and you want to spend a little less money and gain, gain a little more knowledge, uh, you can get all 24 hours of my training for about 150 USD. That's the link, that's the coupon code, and that's all down in the video description. Uh, you can, you know, buy all that and have a good time. Um, that's about it. Uh, big events coming up. SQL Saturday, New York City. May 25th, May 10th, <laughs> SQL Saturday, New York City, 2025, May 10th, Redgate on tour, New York City, Dallas, Amsterdam, taking place in uh, August, September, and October, right back to back, and then Past Data Summit in Seattle, November 17th to 21st, good lord, that's a, Delta card is going to be burning up, baby, oh, that out of the way, let's, let's party, let's do, let's do an office hours here, let's, uh, uh, oh boy, we're going to start off with a very familiar question here. What are your top recommended books on SQL Server performance tuning for someone planning to explore this field for the first time? Well, lucky for you, um, over on my website, I'm going to have to um, excuse the fact that I have not cleaned up my browser tabs, and you're going to have to excuse whatever shows up here, from because I didn't I didn't pick any of this. But if we go to Eric darling.com slash books you're going to get to this page and on this page you're going to see all of the books that I recommend um, these are of course Amazon affiliate links um, I want to say thank you to everyone who has ordered a book so far I have made nearly $21 in uh, Amazon affiliate click money but this is the full list of books that I would suggest getting right down including um, my wonderful book Great post, Eric. So um, that this is the list of books that I recommend. And the way to get it, of course, is to go to ericdarling.com slash books. Very easy to remember. There's not even a go in there. It's just slash books. All right. Let's move on here. Uh, let's get this. Let's circle this square. How are you, Eric? Well... I would be better if you spelled my name correctly. Only my mother is allowed to misspell my name on birthday cards. Thank you. I have a store procedure, bet you do, that reads data from tables with option recompile. Good, magnificent beast, you. Uh, initially, the execution plan indicated that some tables lacked statistics displaying a warning sign. After updating the statistics, the warning sign disappeared. However, the procedure always times out on its first run each day, but subsequent calls are successful. Please advise. Well, um, I've never seen missing statistics warnings go away after just updating statistics. Usually you have to uh, create statistics. Those, those warnings can show up for funny reasons. Um, they can show up for indexed views if you don't have a no expand hint. 
and they can show up on regular tables um, just if you don't have a multi-column statistic that supports whatever predicate or predicates you're looking for. So I, I'm a little little curious about how just updating statistics would make them go away because that doesn't that doesn't create missing statistics that just updates whatever statistics you currently have. Uh, so that's that's a little funny there, but. Uh, this pr procedure always times out on the first run each day. Uh, to me, that smells like um, you do some statistics maintenance at night, perhaps, uh, and SQL Server need, needs to, or maybe you don't do statistics updates, and I think that's, that's probably the more, more reasonable thing. And SQL Server on the first execution of the day perhaps decides that it's time to, uh, to update those statistics. How you can tell what that's happening? If you're on 2019, it becomes a little bit easier. 2019 or better becomes a little bit easier because there is a wait stat called wait on sync stats refresh. Uh, Joe Sack actually had this one put in the product. RIP his, his tenure at Microsoft. Uh, good luck to you, Elasticsearch. Um, having my favorite person in the entire universe, outside of family, of course. Um, but anyway, this smells to me like uh, you, like this store like when this store procedure waits on stats updates and they take a long time. Um, so if you're on 2019 plus, see if you have a lot of waits on the wait on sync stats refresh. You may want to consider switching this database to uh, async stats updates. Um, you may want to consider updating statistics more frequently, since this thing always runs with recompile. And it's not like you're caching a plan and reusing it after the first execution. Then uh, most like then it's not like a plan compilation thing. It's not like you're spending a lot of compile time on the actual execution plan. Uh, it sounds like you're spending time on the stats update that happens prior to um, the, the the query compiling a plan. So that would be my guess. Um, without going down 500 roads and spending two hours playing stump the chump, that's that's the best answer I have for you immediately. All right, here's another question. Oh, another statistics one. I suspect some tables are not getting accurate stats with the default sampling rate. How would you recommend confirming this and finding a better value to set for persisted sample rate if I'm right? Uh, okay, well, if you suspect that some tables, and let's say you have a list of those tables, uh, are not getting accurate stats with the default sampling rate, then one thing you can do is run queries against those tables. Um, you may need, you should probably use literal values so that you're not getting any weirdness from local variables or sniffed parameters. And if it, the query is overly simple, you should probably use and one equals select one so that you don't get auto slash simple parameterization happening on your query. And just test some simple equality predicates against those columns. If the results for just like select count from table where column equals something and one equals select one uh, give you inaccurate results, then you probably have an inaccurate histogram. If you want to find a better sample rate for it, then that's up to you to, the, the, to figure out. You, only you can run those stats updates at 10, 20, 25, 30, whatever, and figure out at what point you start getting accurate cardinality estimates for your predicates. That's the easiest way to do it. I don't have anything magical beyond that. All right. Uh, if I remove a very large non-clustered index, what is the impact on the transaction log? So um, I'm going to teach you how to fish a little bit here um, because I don't want because there are all sorts of local factors that may that may change how, uh, how, what what happens here when when you uh, when you remove a very large non-clustered index, because all you've said is non-clustered index, and there, there's a lot of wiggle room in that. I don't know if your not large non-clustered index is a large non-clustered primary key or anything else of value. Um, I would guess at at base, the transaction log would be impacted by page allocations because SQL Server does need to be able to roll back the index drop if if it were to happen in a transaction. So um, that, that would be my minimum guess, but there's other stuff that might go on that might, that might require additional logging or whatever. So w there's an there's a undocumented but very usable function called, uh, and I'm going to type this out in here, it's called sys.fn underscore db log, there we go, dblog, 
and you usually call it by passing in null, comma null. And so what I would do if I were you is I would find, there might be, actually, there, is there an underscore in that? Let's see. Let's, let's, go to, let's go to the web. Let's make sure that I have this right. Yeah, FND blog. Good, good. All right. We can just get that what first stack exchange answer and pretend that's going to be right forever. So sys.fnd blog. Uh, pass in a couple nulls in the parentheses there, just like so. Oh, come on, zoom it. And you will be able to see uh, exactly what happens when you drop this large non-clustered index. Uh, head over to a development environment. Um, you would probably want to make sure that you have checkpointed in order to clear out whatever, whatever records are in the transaction log. If you're in full recovery model, you may even want to take a transaction log backup or two run the drop command and then do some selects from sys.fndb dblog and see what shows up in there. That will give you a very good idea of what's happening. Um, and other stuff that you could maybe do is like do begin tran, drop the index and then run sp who is active and see what the transaction log writes column says. Um, and then either commit or roll back the transaction. But, you know, again, do all this in a development environment. Be safe out there. Don't, don't, don't just try it in production. Um, unless, unless dev and production are just two absolutely, totally different beasts as far as setup goes, um, then, you're, then you just have a weird round of testing there. But that's the way that I would ver validate what, that, what effect that has on my environment would be to do an experiment like that. Um, I could do that experiment, but you know my Stack Overflow database is in simple recovery, and I got nothing fun going on there. Um, I think I also have accelerated database recovery enabled, which if I, you know, if do that in a transaction, it's written out to the P per persistent version store. It's not written to the transaction log yet, maybe. So like that might be weird. So uh, for you, I would I would just I would go fishing with that a little bit, and use fn underscore sys dot fn underscore d blog parenthesis null, comma null, and parenthesis in order to figure out what exactly goes into your transaction log when that index gets dropped. All right, last question of this round here. You seem to default to sorting, to turning on sort and temptdb. Why? Why would I want to sort in my primary database file? Why would I, why would I want to do that? Why wouldn't I want to do my sorting in temptdb? Where Things like writes and other awful, other awfulness that goes on are heavily optimized in ways that they are not heavily optimized in my data files. Sorting in TempDB is a wonderful thing. Been around for a while, makes a lot of index stuff go faster. And um, unless you're one of those awful people who like, like highly constrains TempDB in weird ways and then complains when you hit TempDB errors, there's, there's no reason not to do it. So. As long as you're not an awful person, it's a great idea. Uh, I, I, I prefer it for all of my um, all of my index creations, and um, you know, drop existing equals on. And if I need to rebuild an index to add page compression, I would much much prefer to sort in tempdb for all of these. Um, I think the only I think you can't do it for column sort indexes. I think for some reason they, they you you can't do it there. That might be something that they got changed in Azure SQL DB kind of recently. I can't, I can't, I, I saw something about that in some what's new in Azure thing, but you know, I, uh, I mostly just read that stuff out of spite. So. <laughs> anyway, that brings us to the end of these five questions. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And if you want to ask your own questions, you can of course go to this very link and you can submit them and you can say, hey, Eric, and you can spell my name right with a K, like the Viking, and uh, I will answer them here and I will do my best. Anyway, thank you for watching.